What is up my YouTube friends? Zoom, Skype, Teams, and Google Meet all have some form of virtual background that people absolutely love when they wanna change it up using their conferencing software. Now, a lot of people have been asking why OBS doesn't have this. I mean, a lot of people. But before now, there were filters that said it could do it, but generally, all they would really do is crash OBS. So, they weren't much use. That is, until now. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add a virtual background to your live stream that works just like the ones in Zoom, and you don't need a green screen. Oh. And of course, it's totally free. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. The process to get this working is super easy. First, I'm gonna show you how to download and install the background removal plugin. Second, I'm gonna show you how to properly set this all up in OBS. And third, I'm gonna show you some cool ways to use this feature to make your live streams a lot more dynamic. So let's install it. The link is in the description so you can follow along. Here we are on the install page and I'm just gonna click go to download. And this brings us here. And if we scroll down to the assets area and I'm gonna click the one for my particular OS. In this case, I'm using Windows. If you're using Mac, there is one for you as well. And there we go. Now it's downloaded. I can just flip over into my downloads. And if I double click on that zip file, you can see we have a data and an OBS plugins folder. I'm just going to go ahead and right click and copy those folders out of the zip file. Now you're probably going to have your OBS installed in C program files OBS dash studio. I don't have mine installed there. It's going to be the same for me. It's just in a different location. So you're just going to want to find that OBS dash studio folder on your machine. Right click on OBS dash studio and select paste and it's going to move the data and the OBS plugin folders right in there and combine them up. And now we have it successfully installed. That's all there is to it. Quick and easy, just the way I like it. Here we are in OBS and you can see that I do have one scene created. So I'm just going to go over to the plus under sources and I'm going to add a video capture device, which is my camera. I'm just gonna call it camera and click okay. Then I'm gonna drop devices down and select the my proper camera. I like to go into custom and set my resolution and then scroll down to the bottom and add a custom audio device. So I know that it selects the proper microphone, in this case, my cam link. And once I'm done, I just click okay check my mic is working it's all good now what i'm going to do is right click on camera and go to filters and here i'm going to go into audio and video filters I'm going to click the plus and select background removal filter and you can see it already works now if you adjust the threshold it adjusts that outer layer around what it senses is you and if you set it too low you can see it kind of infringes on your physicality and if you set it too high you're going to get like this weird halo around you so you kind of want to find a good middle ground the contour filter will kind of try to tightly surround your head or whatever it is that you're trying to surround and then smooth is pretty cool if I adjust it all the way down you can see it pixelates around the edges and the higher up I go the smoother it gets around my head you don't want to touch feather blend silhouette it's just likely to crash this I'm gonna go here and select color I'm going to adjust into the green and there we go we have it nice and green screen I'm going to uh, go ahead and show you that these segmentation models actually do change a lot so if I go into this SI net, it looks really great. Some of these will really make it tight around your head. And the main difference is if I select SI net and I try to add my hands onto the camera, they won't show up. So the difference here is in the way that it's actually figuring out where your body is. So you look, if I go to the SI net and I try to put my hands in there, it's a mess. It flashes all over the place and everything like that. Whereas if I go to media pipe, it will pick up my hands, albeit not terribly well, but it picks them up. It's looking for that stuff. Selfie segmentation is also sort of looking for that stuff. 
SI net I think produces a much better quality removal of the background and so that's kind of the one I go with I'm not worried about it picking up my hands or anything like that so I'm gonna click OK and go out and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another piece to our background here I'm just gonna go in and add a media source I'm gonna select a video and I want it to loop because it's a short video and add it and there you can see what it is I'm just gonna move that below our camera source now I'm gonna right click on my camera again and go back into filters next I'm gonna go to effect filter I'm going to click the plus and I'm going to select chroma key click OK really the default settings work just fine and there you have it we have our background totally removed you can see a little bit of edging around me and of course you can play around with that but this is as good as you're ever going to get on zoom or any of the other ones so that's kind of what we're looking for did you know every YouTube viewer has a superpower that's right your superpower is the ability to supercharge any video just by clicking on that little thumbs up right down there. When you do that, it tells YouTube that this video is helpful and it forces them to share it to a wider audience. Please take just a moment and exercise your superpower. It really does help me out and it makes my cat Dusty super happy too. So thanks. There are a lot of really cool things we can do with this feature. So let's explore a few of them. We can start out here with a scene that has our background in it and we can switch to another scene and there we go. Our background is gone. We can add all kinds of really cool filters and effects and a background video. And that's really all I did here. I used some filter effects and a background change. In this next one here, I actually created this background with a filter. And I can show you how to do that. There's a link up in the top right hand corner that can show you how to use these filters. And we can also just go right back to our regular background. And people are going to be like, how the heck did you do that? If you're like me and you're always looking for new channels to watch on YouTube, let me tell you about a little passion project of mine. The channel's called For the Love of Cars and it's about all things automotive. On there I drive and discuss just about any vehicle I can get my hands on and talk about car culture and all that kind of stuff. I have content on there about Tesla, the Ford Mustang, the Ford Mach-E, and the new Corvette C8, not to mention a bunch of other things as well. If you're interested in car content or you just want to look at what I do in my free time, check it out. There's a link in the description. I'll see you there. Shaders are an awesome way to create fun looks in your live stream. To learn more about it, you can check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.